That's kind of one. What's another? Negative physiological consequence of exercising. Higher lactate levels. Higher lactate levels at any given workload during exercise in the heat. What about uh, muscle glycogen use during exercise in the heat? You use it more faster. So the rate at which you use glycogen is faster. Why is that a problem? Why is it a problem if you use your glycogen faster? Because you have a limited amount of muscle glycogen. There's only so much, and then you run out. What about just temperature in general? Increased core. core temperature, and that causes a lot of problems. Okay, why why does increasing core temperature? What give me a, a potential reason why that causes problems? As, as you get higher, the enzymes change shape. That's right. You have enzymes in your body and chemical processes that are controlled by enzymes, and it needs a particular temperature to run at maximum capacity. When the temperature changes. Enzymes change shape, and they don't uh, work as effectively, and so you have all sorts of problems as a result of that. What else? I'm trying to think. Vasodilate? Uh, yeah, you actually are going to vasodilate. And why do you vasodilate? To send blood flow to the skin. skin to help you cool off. And it helps you cool off, but why is that potentially a bad thing? Right, because if you're sending blood flow to the skin, it means you're not sending it to skeletal muscle. Right? So that's another negative physiological consequence of exercise. And there are a few more, but that's a pretty good start. Uh, so one thing you can do to try to prepare for exercise in the heat is to acclimatize. How long does it typically take to see uh, acclimatization be complete? How many days? Ballpark. Yeah, it's about 10 days to see complete heat acclimatization. It's about 80% complete in about five to six days, but it's complete in about 10 days. Uh, who acclimatizes faster, men or women? Men or women. They're the same. They acclimatize at the same rate. Uh, women tend to rely more on sweating or sending blood flow to the skin. Women tend to rely more on sending blood flow to the skin. Men tend to rely more on sweat. Okay, let's talk about some physiological adaptations with heat acclimatization, which help exercise performance in the heat. Let's see if you can list some. Uh, list some physiological adaptations that occur with heat acclimatization, which help your exercise performance in the heat. So let's say you go to a, a warm place, you train for 10 days, what are some physiological responses that will happen which will help you perform better during exercise and heat? Start storing more water. Uh, storing more water specifically, where do you store more water? Plasma. Plasma volume. Plasma volume expands quite a bit, 20, 30 percent. Okay. Why is that good? Because that's the source of where most of your water volume for sweat is going to come from, from plasma volume. So helps you maintain cardiac function, helps you cool off. What else? Sweating. What about sweating? Uh, you sweat more. Uh, you don't necessarily sweat more, but you sweat sooner in exercise. That's another adaptation. You start sweating sooner in exercise. Okay. And why does that help? If you can rely more on sweating to keep you cool then it means you don't have to send as much blood flow to the skin and you can defend it to the muscles. So that's a positive adaptation. So you can actually reduce the amount of blood flow you have to send to the skin because you can sweat, rely on sweating. Uh, what about the concentration of your sweat? It's more dilute. And why is that good? You don't lose as many electrolytes through sweat. What about core temperature during exercise? Core temperature is going to be lower. So that's a positive effect. Uh, you'll use muscle glycogen at a slower rate. Lactate levels will be lower. And those are all positive physiological adaptations in exercise in the heat that help uh, exercise performance in a lower decision. Um, 
Uh, let's just briefly, we talked about sports strengths as well. Uh, what's probably the number one issue when you design a sports strength? Uh, one of them is taste, but the other big issue physiologically is how fast the fluid leaves your stomach. Okay, which fluid is going to empty from your stomach faster? Uh, something that has carbohydrates and electrolytes in it, or water? Water is going to empty your stomach faster. Okay, once you add carbohydrates or electrolytes, it doesn't leave uh, your stomach as quickly. What else? Okay, questions about thermoregulation? Okay, let's do ergogenic aids quickly. Um, yes. So we don't have to know, like, do you say like the exercise in the cold? Do you say? Uh, yeah. Anything? Don't don't worry about exercise in the cold. We didn't have time to cover that. So. And the percentages, do you need to know about the convection? And, uh, uh, those percentages, I don't. You don't need to know the exact percentages, but I would say, like I asked you, which one is the biggest, uh, largest component at rest, okay. which is the largest component at exercise? That those. Are the Okay. Uh, ergogenic aids. We talked about uh, bicarbonate loading. If you're going to bicarbonate load, what substance are you going to buy at the grocery store and ingest? Baking soda. <coughs> yes, baking soda. And how would baking soda help exercise performance? How would ingesting baking soda help exercise performance? Um, the lactic acid will build up later. Uh, why would it build up later? Because what, what does baking soda do? It's a buffer. It's a buffer. Okay, so you're increasing your buffer pool, your acid buffer pool within your body. Okay, the more buffer you have, the more uh, lactic acid you can neutralize, and the longer you can exercise before lactic acid levels get so high that you have to stop. So what type of event would uh, bicarbonate loading be useful for? Uh, well, give, give me a duration. A continuous exercise event that lasted about how long? Two minutes. Two minutes on the short end and as long possibly as ten minutes is what your book says. I think it's a little shorter, but somewhere in the ballpark of two to ten minutes. And if it works for you, it doesn't work for everybody, but if it works for you, about how much performance enhancement is typically seen with bicarbonate loading? One second. It's about one second for every one minute of exercise. So if it was a five minute event, you'd probably see about a five second improvement in performance on average. And physiologically speaking, or practically speaking, I should say, is that important or significant? Yes. Yeah, that can be a pretty big deal. Okay. Uh, what's the consequence of bicarbonate loading? Primary consequence. Usually it's stomach upset and diarrhea is the big issue. Uh, how do you, uh, how would you if you were going to bicarbonate load, how would you do it? You take the bicarbonate and usually you put it in water and you drink it about 60 to 90 minutes prior to the start of your... Uh, would you do it in training or would you do it just before the competition? Just before the competition. Okay, what about uh, steroids? Would you do steroids in training or would you do it just before the competition? That you would have to do regularly in training. And what's the primary mechanism of how steroids enhance performance? What do steroids do? They usually increase testosterone production in the body. Okay, the other big thing that they do along with it, besides being anabolic and increasing muscle mass, is they speed up recovery. Recovery occurs much quicker with steroids and with... Uh, testosterone injections and human growth recovery is much quicker. Um, some of the primary consequences of steroids obviously are liver function issues, reproductive organ issues, uh, behavioral changes, oftentimes masculinization effects in women, all those are negative, uh, negative side effects.